everyone. So today I'm going to show you the simplicity of installing, planning and configuring IT resilience with Zerto. Um, so if we have a look, first steps here is I've got a uh, Windows VM um, and that's where we're going to install the Zerto Virtual Manager um, product into. So if we just go to the console, you can see I've already downloaded the installer. So I just run this. Um, and it will bring up the installation window, at which point we can go ahead and install it. The reason we install this first is actually this then gives us insight into vCenter. So if we just skip through next. Set the license agreement. You can obviously choose where you install it. You've got a couple of options, express or custom. Custom gives you more um, configurability around database, etc. Enter in the vCenter details. Um, so you can see the vCenter name there. As I said, we install this now um, because it, connecting to the vCenter gives us more visibility to help with the planning at, and the next stage, which I'll show you after we've done this. Um, so just type in the uh, vCenter name, followed by the username. Typically, you'd have a, a Zerto service account within uh, vSphere at this point. Um, I'm just using administrator. And then obviously give the site a name. Uh, in this instance, I'm calling the site Phoenix. Um, and then you've got an option here to enable online services. This is key for the planning stage. Um, it helps us report into uh, our analytics platform um, and we can then obviously gain details from that. The next stage was obviously to run the tests and now we're performing the installation itself. Um, so the tests just validate that there is connectivity to vCenter at that particular point in time with the credentials you've provided. So this step shouldn't take too long. Um, we should see the bars moving shortly. There we go. Um, and then obviously after this, the Zerto Virtual Manager is installed um, and we can then look to uh, access it um, do some minor configuration before then going to the planning stage. So you can see the installation is now complete, hasn't taken us very long. We're not going to open it within um, the ZVM itself. I'm actually going to uh, open another browser and, and access it directly. So you can see the IP address here. Um, so if we just pop that IP address in, we use HTTPS um, over port 9669. So the certificate we put in initially is self-signed, um, so you will need to just proceed. Um, and then we get the uh, ZVM login page. Um, when you log into the ZVM, we actually uh, provide or insert privileges into vCenter. So you would want to use a ut utilize a user uh, who has the Zerto privileges. Again, I'm using administrator. Um, and then just log in at which point it will then ask uh, for a license key just to register it. Once this is then registered, we then uh, will be utilizing our uh, ZVM, which is talking to vCenter, to pull out statistics from vCenter, things like IOPS and change rates, um, things that are key in any replication technology to understand in order to size bandwidth and the like, um, which we will then collate um, within Planner, and I'll show you that shortly. So obviously this has just been installed and so first load can take a little while. There we go. So we just pop the uh, license key in now. And then that locks us in. At this point, we don't need to do anything else. We've already enabled it to report home to um, the online services, our analytics SaaS platform. So if we switch over to our analytics platform and then go to the planning tab, what you can do in here is choose VM selection, choose your site, you see Phoenix here, select the VMs, so you can see the VMs listed um, are the same in vCenter, obviously remove um, the Zerto related VMs, move over the ones that you want to um, see sizing for, you can see I've done this for vCenter as well, and what you're going to see here then is WAN sizing, total journal size, total recovery disk size, 
is also average IOPS, average throughput, um, and then we can calculate the required journal size utilizing those as well, all from the statistics from vCenter that we are collecting. So it's going to give you a really good idea of uh, your requirements in order to protect the workloads that you've chosen to protect. You can then obviously export this to CSV or Excel, so you've got all of that data to hand. Um, this, as I said, is only a demonstration environment, so you can see the values are fairly low. In a real environment, you're going to get exactly the same output um, related to whatever your workloads are doing. You can then go ahead and start deploying your virtual replication appliances or VRAs. Um, so just choose which data store you want them to be located on, which network you want them to be connected to, um, and then also the IP settings. Um, I use DHCP as this is a lab environment, but most environments you're probably going to use static. Um, and the key thing is it's one VRA per host, and this is how Zerto scales. You add a host, you add a VRA. And then again, do the same for each of the hosts that you have within your environment. I have two hosts, so I have two VRAs. Um, so I'll just mirror the configuration um, and then let them go and install. So all we're doing here is effectively pushing out an OVF file to vSphere um, and um, at which point they'll then obviously be powered on and marked uh, as on and connected to the Z ZVM. The last stage before we can configure, conf um, configure virtual protection groups, which I'll talk about in a minute, is actually pairing the sites. Um, now, I've already pre-created another site, so I'm just going to pair to it, um, and uh, we'll get that up and running. It's another vCenter site in this instance, but Zerto also supports AWS, Azure, Hyper-V, um, IBM Cloud. So you can have different sites in here. Um, uh, there's no limit on the number of sites per se. We then get to the VPG section. So the VPGs are really core to everything we do. In order to protect any workloads, you create virtual protection groups. Um, so these virtual protection groups are consistency groupings um, where you can protect one or more VMs. Traditionally, you protect an individual VM. With Zerto, you protect the VMs as one. Um, so if we go through, I'll talk about some of the benefits that that, that gives you. So if we just give it a name, so CRM in this instance, I'll choose the CRM VMs, move them over. That means they're then being protected together. I can put um, boot ordering in here. So you can move your VMs into different groups and have boot delays between the groups. Once you've selected your VMs, you then choose where you want to replicate them to. Um, so I'm going to use my new site. So that's the Edinburgh one. At which point I then have the option to choose the host cluster or resource pool I want to replicate to. So I'm just going to choose the Edinburgh cluster. You can choose the data store on the target side. So these are the defaults. Um, you can actually provide more granularity here. Um, key thing to note is your journal history. Um, so Zerto can have a journal history of up to 30 days. And I'll talk a bit more around the journal later on. You can then edit every single disk attached to the VM individually. You can choose to mark a disk as temp data where we will replicate the entire contents of the disk initially, but then no changes on that disk. So good for anything that's highly transactional, but ultimately temporary. You can choose whether the disk is thin or thick provisioned on the target side. Um, you can choose which data store for each disk that we're recovering to. So different disks can be on different data stores. We support raw device mappings or RDMs in VMware. And then we also give you the ability to pre-seed if you like. So maybe you've got a very large um, disk. You don't want to replicate it all over the wire. You can actually take a copy of the VMDK, ship it to the target side, um, and use that to pre-seed the replication. <clears throat> we now get there to start configuring some of the recovery options. So you choose your live network and a test network. Test network you typically want isolated. Um, that's because you don't want to have any impact on production when you're performing a test failover. You can choose a recovery folder, depending on um, whether you're using folders in vCenter or not. Um, and then pre post recovery scripts can be inserted here to do whatever you want from that perspective. 
From a network side of things, exactly the same as storage. Every single NIC can be edited individually. You can set the failover IPs, test IPs, so we can do the re-IP as part of that. Long-term retention. This is really key to um, obviously providing that uh, backup capability. You can choose where you're, you're replicating it to or backing it up to. You can choose which VMs need to be um, indexed. So I'm going to choose the app VM here. And then you can choose a schedule. So you can do daily, um, weekly, monthly, and yearly, and they can be incremental or full. Um, and then you can obviously specify the retention of each of those. Very much like a traditional backup product. The key thing with Zerto is we have no production impact on your production environment, um, which gives you a lot more flexibility around when you run this um, and a lot less risk. You then get a summary of everything you've created, um, at which point you can then go ahead and click done. We'll then go ahead and create the virtual protection group and perform the initial sync. Um, so where we copy the data over to the target side. Now what we then do once the initial sync is complete is we then perform our continuous data protection. So I talked a little bit earlier about our journal. What we're essentially doing here is uh, replicating all of the changes that occur on the source side to the target side based on all of the configuration we just configured. And then we're inserting checkpoints in that journal every five seconds, every five seconds for each VM. Um, and that's a point in time you can then recover to. So you have incredible granularity to recover to just seconds before an issue with Zerto. Um, and actually what we do is we ensure that point in time is inserted at the exact same point in time across every VM within that virtual protection group. So that's the consistency mechanism. So if we have a look at some of the uh, capabilities and features you can utilize with Zerto once you're protecting um, your workloads and applications, we have our test failover capability, um, our live failover capability, exactly as they sound like, very DR focused. We have a restore file, so you can actually recover individual files from the journal um, from any of your VMs. You can move your virtual protection groups for migration and mobility use cases. And you have search and restore, which is your long-term retention um, search capabilities. So if you do a test failover, just to show you the journal, you can choose the virtual protection group, select checkpoint, and actually you can then see all of the checkpoints in the journal. And you can see we've pretty much got one of these every five seconds since we created it. These really show how Zerto can minimize your data loss regardless of the issue, whether it's ransomware, OS corruption, um, you know, whether you've got a power outage. It doesn't matter. Zerto can recover to just seconds before the issue occurred, ensuring your data loss window is down in those seconds as well. When you tie that into the mobility capabilities of Zerto that I've talked about, and now the backup capabilities that we have where we're removing the traditional overheads associated with backups. Zerto is providing you an IT resilience platform um, and the simplicity that goes along with a single platform to really free up your resources to focus on innovation for your business um, and other key aspects rather than just keeping the lights on, which has traditionally been the case.